Welcome to The Gym's Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Kleber, and this podcast is designed to share stories of our franchisees, franchisors, Jim himself, and other members of The Gym's family that we think you might find interesting. If you are researching our brand, we've got a previous back catalogue. There's so many great episodes that you can find online. And if you do like what you hear, please make sure you leave us a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching, or online as well. We really do appreciate the support. Without further ado, here's today's episode. So, Henry Costa, thank you for joining us today on The Gym's Podcast, and Jade, who is one of our great divisional support team members nominated you guys and said you'd be fantastic you do a great job in your business uh, to have on have a chat and also give you on a core voucher which is a silver membership which basically gives you two free nights at any accord it's on the world and some other discounts and dying in drinks and all that sort of stuff so it's worth around 600 bucks so that's our thank you to us to you sorry thank you. cool so let's start off with hannah and costa about what were you doing prior to jim's dog wash yeah so costa I, I used to be a chef, so I've been in hospitality since I was 14 and um, now 22. And I just needed a career change. It was the politics, the hours, it, you weren't really getting much for your work. And I'm always one to want to go above and beyond. So I thought if we start our own business, it sort of helps. <laughs> it definitely does help. I, um, I was just basically in management and hospitality for a while. And I was also studying at university to do teaching. And I just sort of had this feeling that, you know, I love dogs. I love animals. I like business as well. And we both discussed that when we were together and we thought, well, you know, you're going to get the best out of everything if you're your own boss. So that's how we started. You said you're 22, Costa, or how old are you guys? Yes. So Costa 22 and I'm 21 at the moment. Wow. Very, very young. So this is great to inspire other people because most people have sold the same thing, you know, go to uni or, you know, do an apprenticeship. There's nothing, there's nothing really ever spoken about small business. So what did your friends and family think about when you told them you're doing this? They were scared, obviously. <laughs> um, the whole paid work guarantee, the whole deal was like sort of too good to be true. So then we had a meeting with Sharon and we figured out that it sort of is what it is. I mean, it is what it and, is. Um, and we went from there. Yeah. You never look back. It, sure. Yeah, it was definitely, a lot of people were surprised. They were a little bit nervous, but. Yeah. We sold everything. <laughs> we, we sold all actually. Really? Yeah. yeah. We oh, wow. <laughs> so long saving. We thought, yeah. All right. We know we've got the money, but let's just go above that, sell everything we have, and let's just, you know, just, I suppose, wing it and see what happens from there. <laughs> So how was it? So how did you decide on Jim's dog wash? Was there other things you're looking at the time, or was it just Jim's dog wash? Was there other things around it? So we wanted to do actually a food trailer, um, but the ongoing cost of food and food goes off, and yeah. um, permits were an issue with Adelaide, and then it was just so much marketing yourself that the fact that we're in a franchise really helps us, and it's helped us sort of not just worry about the work. Being on your own is a little bit. Uh, I really do give it to people that do start on their own because if it wasn't for joining a franchise, I think we would be in a lot more of a different position. We wanted to do the food truck, but we just sort of found that the demand wasn't really there. There wasn't that guaranteed, you know, you had to have that really good spot. And if you didn't have that good spot, if you don't get work, that's just, that was what it was. Tough luck. <laughs> yeah. Food trucks, you never know. He doesn't mind the mobile services. You never know. Yeah. What type of what, what type of cuisine would you do as a gym's food truck? Or what type of cuisine were you gonna do? This one you can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't know. Like to be honest, it, it was I was thinking Greek, but then I was thinking Asian, and then I was thinking fusion. It was just a whole lot of things running off the top of our head. Yeah. We we're just depressed driving to work one day, and we saw the gym's trailer in front of us, and we we're just talking about it. Like, is this meant to be? So it was a little bit of that manifestation. I think we were talking about sort of wanting to just work for ourselves, and we were just over all of the politics and everything. And we thought, all right, well, this is something I've always dreamt of as a kid, and I just thought maybe you know, maybe it is what it is. Maybe it is what I want to do. And here we are. <laughs> but only for doing it at such a young age, because a lot of people might get to 50 or 45 bef- and have gone through that for 20 years before they then have an up. Whereas you guys have yeah. made a really good decision early because like, you know, you can try things. And as you said, it's a great start in business at such an early age. And if you want to do other things or whatever, you've got such a really good footing. Yeah. So what's, so with, so you made the decision to do the Jim's Dog Watch franchise, maybe tell people about the process is what's involved with doing it all. And, and it can be quite a bit of a whirlwind with it. So. I just want to tell people about your experience. When you made that decision to do it, what happened next? Yeah. So it started with Sharon. Started with Sharon, the meeting, and we just sort of, we were nervous. We were thinking, okay, well, it, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask. So we started that process and then it basically moved on to the training in Melbourne. And we thought, all right, well, 
let's just go. Let's just see how we feel. Um, Which was A plus. The and the training really sold it to us. That was probably the biggest game changer. I that think a lot of confidence. We felt, yeah, we felt a lot more confident sort of seeing how it worked. And even meeting Jim, like that was such a big thing to us. We, you didn't really expect that, you know, everyone sort of thinks, is he real? Is Jim, you know, is he actually there? He's brilliant. Why? <laughs> brilliant. <man. laughs> um, meeting him really was a game changer as well. Like it, it sort of showed us that no matter where you start, no matter how you start, you can always start <laughs> as, as weird as that sounds. And we um, basically did the training. We um, met everyone. We sort of put all of our books and everything together and we thought, all right, well, it doesn't hurt to do a bit of training. Let's do that. We met with um, one of the franchisees that are in South Australia. She did training with us for 10 days. Um, and then... It was straight into the trailer. Um, it was really good. I think hitting the ground running was the best. Um, you really sort of just, you want to put it off because you're nervous. But really, if you just throw yourself into that deep end and you take the chance, uh, we would never look back now. We did seven days of training because we got COVID towards the end of it. So we yeah. ended her training and we're still confident enough. To- we were still confident. We still had the support from everyone. It never, just because we had to stop early doesn't mean we had no support. We were everyone, you know, we had the calling, we had, you know, even FaceTime and things, anything we had questions about, you're never alone. From the start to where we are now, we've never once been left alone. No. That's the best part of it. It was the grooming training because it's obviously completely unrelated to what you were doing previously. So... How, how, how was that originally? Because it could be quite daunting. Like it's a completely new skill and you're dealing with, you know, a, a live animal in regards to this sort of thing. So right on. How, how was it? It was definitely stressful. Um, pushing ourselves in the deep and to even just go. Yeah. yeah. That that itself was nerve wracking in the morning. You know, we're actually, oh my God, we're actually doing this. You know, we're, we're so scared. But once you get on a trailer and I think if you just have that right mindset that, you know, you got to love animals to be in this job. That's, yeah, that's the number that's one the thing. Question. You ask yourself, do I actually really like dogs? And if your answer is no, maybe don't. Maybe don't do it. <laughs> but we we basically just sort of started, got into the trailer, sort of getting the grooming tools in our hands, you know, knowing that a dog is a dog. It's like, you know, a, a child in a way. They're never going to sit still. Yep. They're never going to always have the best attitude about it. Um, you just sort of have to remember that, you know, it's a living thing. It just wants to be seen. It wants to be noticed. It just craves that sort of affection from you as well. And once you sort of have that relationship with a dog, to be honest, like you're set, you're set. We, um, you go to work and they're running towards you or happy and you're like, okay. It's crazy. Even on the training, you know, seeing her client that all the dogs that were just so happy to see us and, you know, you'd see those big German shepherds and great Danes running and you're like, oh, I can do this. But they're just big softies. Yeah, they come in and you just you just have to, you know, put your best foot forward. And the training really was something else. It, it was fun. <laughs> That's for sure. You guys deal with, um, how do you find dealing with, let's say, more you nervous dogs? There might be a lot more anxious dogs now, um, especially yeah. during COVID, a lot more anxious dogs and yeah. not socialised as well. So common question we, you probably would get would be, you know, most people might say, oh, you, I've got an aggressive dog or my dog's anxious. How would you go about dealing with that? Yeah. Most of all, I'd say patience. <laughs> you definitely need patience. patience. Definitely um, needed. You got to communicate with your co- like client the fact that look, hey, the dog is like this. Um, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna do like a few steps here and there to get past it. Um, a lot of the time, the, because they've got such good hearing, we uh, found that placing a cotton sort of happy hoodie over their ears blocks yeah. out a little a lot of the noise, um, and, and it helps them thoroughly get through yeah. the process for sure. It's just time, time and patience. You just have to be really careful. Obviously, a dog is a dog in terms of they have that, you know, they, they, they can sometimes snap and have that moment of, oh, my God, I'm anxious, and sometimes it turns into aggression because they don't know how to show it. They're just so protecting themselves. You just, yeah, they're just protecting themselves. So you just have to sort of keep in mind that, you know, with a dog, you don't really want to stick your face in their face and so to get them a little bit more stressed than they possibly already are, you just have to sort of Keep your sort of face away, sort of just gently touching them. No harsh movements, no loud, no. too many loud noises, yeah. if you can. Obviously, the blow dryer, like he said, with the cotton, that definitely helps in terms of noise. Um, but yeah, patience is probably the number one thing with dealing with those Not dogs. picking them up, like when you know that they're a bit timid. Just, yeah. all right, get in the trailer. No. Yeah, yeah, no. Obviously, give them a treat, give them a bit of a walk, you know, get to know them first, let them smell you, yeah. all that type of thing. Yeah, How many customers do you roughly have a week or do you do it? in your book at the moment so we do anywhere between 
we see at least anywhere between six to 10 houses a day. Wow. Yeah. So we've got to make it worth it because there is two of us. Obviously being yeah. two of us. Yeah, we do sort of, you think of it in your head as a split income, for example, you want to know, is that worth it? Is it... Is that being mobile as well, you know, it's very tricky in terms of the timing that you have in the day. Um, you can definitely set aside a few things, but if you just sort of have that right mapping and the right scheduling and you've been to those jobs, for example, for a few times, you know sort of how long you spend there. Um, that's why we're now able to put regulars, you know, push them all in one day. At the start though, uh, I've got to say you really do need to test the waters and really give yourself you know, do less in a day when you start. You don't need to prove yourself to anyone yet. You just need to see how much you can handle, how long you spend. Thing. Yeah, you'll never, you'll never be jobless in this interview. How do you guys work together? Because most of the dog wash franchisees interview always in by themselves. They might have by themselves, but they have employees. So is it just how's it work together in terms of the the workflow? Yeah. So Hannah's really good at um, communicating with people. So she does a good 60 to 80 percent of the, For the administration and everything and all that. the phone's constantly going off um yeah so i'm just another trailer <laughs> um if we got like a two dog household she'll put the phone down and we'll obviously worry about the dogs and yeah. grind them together in the trailer yeah um just sort of timing things correctly because you can't really have both dogs on the table at the same time bathe one while the guy other person zipping all that type of yeah thing. you just sort of have to we're really sort of try and make sure we've got our space and everything in there as well. You know, working with someone and being in each other's face all the time, it is hard being in a small toilet. Y yes, it is. But we've also made the decision to buy a, we've just bought recently a high roof Renault van. Um, so Costa and I are going to separate our work and sort of split the clients up and sort of try and do less hours and get that still same income flowing rather than, you know, doing the 12 hours, six days a week that we've done. more ground as well. Cover more ground as well, you know, sort of. All our six hours, uh, six days a week, 12 hours a day. Wow. When we started, we we were bad. We we basically just wanted to establish ourselves. We were just so excited and obviously stuttering. Your excitement in, gets in the way for sure. It definitely gets in the way of your sleep. We formed a lot of relationships with people, which was the best thing we did. So we were doing about seven days a week at the start. We were very full on. Um, we knew we were going away for Christmas. So we thought, all right, let's just go hard and then we so can relax a bit. And now it sort of changes between about five to five and a half days to about six days a week, depending on... You know, if we were able to fit everyone into a day rather than make it another day, we just put in that little we bit. Had, we always have Sunday off because it's at the end of the week. We find that it gives us enough time during the week to, if anyone wants to reschedule, we can just pop them back in on the Sunday. So we usually pick up a little day. half day. They obviously love it because that's a really, because a, a lot of the time we've, we obviously say, you know, lifestyle where people might have been doing those hours in the corporate world and they want to take it a bit easier. Yeah. We tend to interview that. Whereas you guys are going with the full on, you know, Let's pray the whole way. We're going to make it work. Definitely. I think That's fantastic. We really want to, I think we just want to grow quick. We, we sort of have this motivation that we've always sort of had like the sort of strive to work all the time that we're so used to working ridiculous hours in hospitality that what we know, yeah, we yeah. Feel, we're doing those hours for someone else and not getting treated really how we should. Why not do it for ourselves? And obviously the goal in the long run is to, Oh, yeah. down, but Absolutely. but we're young and we thought we got the energy now might as well use it oh, oh, had, yeah we've never had weekends anyway in hospitality so we thought why don't we used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay now with um so what's your plans for your business then you said you're going to do another trail i know a lot of people in dog wash are starting to put employees on so is that something yeah. you're looking towards or what are you hoping to do but right now, because we've got it parked in our driveway, just sitting there, <laughs> collecting dust. Um, yeah. We bought a high roof rental. So with that, we're going to um, send it off to Melbourne, get it fitted out, and then yeah. pretty much try to have it done before Christmas because we know Christmas is really busy. And Hannah and I are obviously going to go our separate ways um, during the day and just cover as much ground as possible. That's our next goal. After that, obviously, we want to step back a bit and yeah. hire someone, obviously give someone an opportunity to have such a good job. Yeah, definitely. And what are some common things that customers should know about between the grooms or between the washers? What are some things that you, if you could just, you know, you, you keep saying the same things a lot of times. What are some things you want to point out for customers maybe to consider between grooms and washers for their dogs? Because I've interviewed a few Jim's Dog Wash franchisees and it seems to be like customers, unfortunately, sometimes just think you're going to just sort out everything and they leave it maybe six or eight weeks and then... 100%. You know, so they think that you like... 
six to eight weeks of brushing in about an hour's time. Yeah, it's, like, yeah, it's, hard. <laughs> it's just communicating with them correctly. Just let yeah. them know that the type of breed they've got, they need either brushing, Absolutely. et cetera. Um, and if they want to maintain the length, then they obviously got to maintain with the brush. Correct. Definitely. I, I have found the most common actual thing at the moment is um, with oodle dogs. So any dogs that are sort of curly coat or yeah. have a thick coat, one thing that I've noticed that a lot of people just haven't really seen to brass because it's not really advertised as much. Um, combing, a, fi a fine tooth comb is actually the best thing you can use on those dogs in between appointments because it actually gets to the roots and the core of the hair. Sometimes people think maybe slicker brushes and things work all the time. Most dog breeds, things like the standard like Maltese and sort of straight haired dogs, it does. Um, the biggest thing is though that really sort of messes the appointments up is that they try to brush them and you know it really they disappoint themselves because they think oh like you know i've done all this work why isn't it working yeah you they know, just want to shave the they dog. feel discouraged and so you just gotta communicate you just have to find the right tools finding a comb for a dog with really thick like knotty sort of tight hair it, it makes the biggest difference it's it's very maintenance field you know owning a dog you sort of sign yourself up to that um and sort of getting a spot like securing a spot um, in the calendar because us groomers are so busy. If per a person might want to like skip one week out because they feel like they can stretch it, which is totally fine, but then they'll sort of miss that whole month rotation. Yeah. Our our honest, honest advice is please pre-book. <laughs> please just pre-book, even if you're not 100% sure what you know your schedule is at the time. If we just have that sort of both sides, we know that that's when your dog's due. You'll never go wrong. You're done. A lot of our customers aren't even home when we go. Yeah, we we have a, you know, if, if you're not able to be home, we understand everyone has a busy schedule. And if you're not able to be home, we have this trust with our customers that they'll, you know, leave a roller door key or leave something out sort of where it's safe and we'll go do the job for them and transfer or do whatever you have to because we figured, you know, if they have that trust with us, there's, it's unstoppable. And that's where the gym's name comes in because we are with such a well-known, established company. Yeah. Um, they definitely trust us. The trust is very much there. <laughs> it's so no convenience. It's such a great point as well. Like we have cleaning franchises, the same and mowing guys and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's fantastic to hear that. It's so, so much more convenient for a customer just to have you guys come around and that that's fantastic to hear that. Is that, is that like half your clients or something you would say or is that? A good 30% of them. I'd say a good 30%. That's great. Yeah. It's yeah. Sort of something that some people don't realize we can actually do. You mainly have to bring it up to them because they sort of, they don't really want to suggest it. Um, we we'll suggest it usually on the third time out the yeah. visit if, when we, if it's not working. When we've got that little bit of a bond with them and they, you know, they know our dog's comfortable, their dog's sorry, comfortable with us, then sort of go from there. <laughs> it's such a no-brainer. It's such a great, great service that you guys do. Now, I was going to talk about the um, dog breeds. So do you have any particular type of dog breeds you prefer doing or are some more trickier than others or yeah, what type yeah. of dogs do you come across? Absolutely. We come across every single type of mixed bag of lollies. We really get yeah, a mix. From two kilos to a hundred kilos. Yeah. So really? yeah, our biggest um, client is a great day named Hamilton and he is just weighted at 102.5 yeah, kilos. He keeps going up. <laughs> Why is the same as me? Yeah. <laughs> <Bloody hell. laughs> Definitely. And then we've got, you know, a tiny chihuahua who's maybe a kilo and a half to two kilos max. A little Enzo. you got to put the blower on so light because they'll just... He's going to blow away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> have to be They're careful. Very, very wayless. I think we, in the best way possible say, we do, we don't favoritise any dog breeds. We do definitely love our big dogs, um, you know, our Roddies and our... Uh, you know, the big staffies, we love them all to death. They're just so, like, you know, they're just so energetic and happy and they sort of make the day really, you know, you're starting at 8 a.m. in the freezing cold and the dog's freaking out to see you. Definitely feels good. Um, the smaller the dog, usually the more the attitude. Yes. Sound. Yes. Little yep. dog attitude. Um, but also I've, I must say that Grudels have definitely become probably one of our very, very much favourite. Especially because people aren't yeah. taking many Oodles on right now because they're such... Oh, really? Yes, yeah. so ah. a people are a lot of um, groomers. I find even just international, they are struggling to take on oodle customers because a lot of the time the customers do want their hair longer, um, and if they are matted, it ends up being shorter. And a lot of people are not the happiest about it, I suppose. And I think coming in with the advice of the fine tooth comb, if people are really you know determined to keep that length, they will do it. And yeah. We found that we've sort of been pushing that to a lot of our customers and all of our referrals have been following that same structure. And I think that's why 
maybe that's why that is our favorite because they're, they're maintained pretty nicely now for us. <laughs> That's great. That's great to hear. And um, yeah, it's interesting. I've asked a few people this question and I think you guys said it's a bit different breeds to everyone else. I think people have said golden retrievers, a few golden retrievers and answered in poodles as well because they like the um, being able to do different styles and that sort of thing as well. So yeah. And what about yourself? What dogs do you have? Um, so we've got four Cocker Spaniels. Um... Four? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been up and two and I think that's enough. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. Luke, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot, lot. Um, but they, they're they not too big, so it's not too much of a, you know, they don't knock us over every time we come in unless they are really excited. Um, but we've I've grown up with Cocker Spaniels my whole life and I've had a Maltese, I've had a Labrador, I've had the wall. Um, Costa grew up not so much around dogs. Um, this was definitely a change for him um, when we moved in together and got dogs and basically... We started to see that, okay, I think. I can't live without them. I'm like, you, yeah, you got to like them pretty quick. <laughs> you got four of them. Yeah. I know, we're in two. One of them's a uh, Dash Hound Cocker Spaniel mix. So he looks a bit different looks from the bit, right. It looks a bit longer and a bit sort of stockier. Um, one of them is a Springer mix, Springer Spaniel mix, and the other two are purebred. So they, they've got, you know, the long ears and the long body, and they're just, they're the best. Just, now, who, now, who suits those types of dogs? I'm not. Honestly, I would say anyone workers. shift yeah. workers, definitely Long shift work workers. And... They are able to entertain themselves a lot. Um, I would say a lot of elderly people. I find they are the beautiful companions. They're very loyal dog. Families, families, kids. They're incredibly good with kids. I've had you know lots of different family members with um, young children come, and just so the dogs are. They just sort of know to sort of have a sniff, and they get a little bit protective. But they know their limits. They somehow sort of pick up on that, you know, they need to back off a bit and sort of allow the space. And I, I don't think a lot of breeds always pick up on that. And that's understandable. You know, they... A dog's a dog. A dog is a dog. They they always want to be around everyone. And, you know, just knowing that limitation, you know, knowing how to treat the dog and just sort of know where they need to sort of relax a bit. Um, really, any breed's perfect for that, to be honest. And with your business, what's some of the... um things that you've, you've picked up or what are some things that um, might you've got into it ring true to you in terms of advice that you can provide um, people basically based on your journey so far? One of the things is, and a lot of franchisees come across this, you cannot please everyone. You can please 99% of the people, but there's always that one person that is either unhappy in life or they want, they expect everything and you just cannot please them. So obviously don't put yourself down because of that one bad experience. We've had yeah. quite a few bad experiences because there's two of us, we get through quite a few leads and customers and yep. you get a mixed bag of lollies. And it's yeah. just to always think about the good chunk of good you've always done. Yeah. And not to, not like, to focus on or dwell on the negative. Just there, there will always be one person that may want to just complain for the sake of it because they don't really see how it affects, you know, a, a business. They just don't. Well, you got a great star rating because that's why that's, that's why I ask because I look at your star rating on the side. It's 90, you got 90 ratings at an average of 4.9 stars, which is fantastic. So, um, but yeah, you're right. That's a really good point. You, you mentioned Costa because um, it can get you down a bit. If you have 99% of the people like what you're doing, then there's one negative comment. You, I don't know about you guys, but I dwell, well, that's me. I'll do a negative I'm thing, but I'm yeah. the 99 thing. So, yeah. So, what are the, so, how do you deal with that situation then? Is there something where you just compartmentalize and say, look, just just move on and look forward? Or how do you or do you look at what you've what you could have done or how do you sort of um, look at that situation or work through it? Think about it constantly. So everything that you've just brought up, we that runs through the brain for sure. Like said, what did we do wrong? Could did we do something wrong, even though we didn't? Possibly. Would we have done something better? Maybe something we can keep in mind next time. Sometimes it may just genuinely be someone that isn't happy with the price. Um, being a premium service, you know, you will get sort of those reviews that people are saying, well, that's ridiculous. I would never pay that much. And obviously, thank you to Jim, who doesn't allow that to affect us so much at a business point of view. You know, we don't get put down on a lower star rating because we no. know it's worth now. Um, Needless to say, we don't charge $600 for a No, we don't. No. <laughs> Wait, there's parameters. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. The quality service, it is a, qual it's a, you know, it's a fair price, and that's, that's yeah. what people need to understand with gyms. Absolutely, that's for sure. And yeah, business, like, everything's getting more expensive in life, so. Yeah. It has sort of lessened the amount of sort of people complaining about prices. I think everyone's just accepted that yeah. everything is going up, and unfortunately, we all do have to live in it. It is sort of a luxury service, I guess, in some ways, and other ways maybe not so luxury maybe it is needed for the dog so people 
like, thank goodness people really do love their dogs. So they will and, want to look after And them. sometimes like if you want to drop the price, we've got a lot of clients that come to us. So they bring a dog to us. We don't have to use like wear and tear our car or fuel. Oh, great. Yeah. So. so we just always offer sort of exceptions if people can't really afford it as much this month. But, you know, dropping a little bit of the price if they come to us, it really does. It really does create a lot of customers. All we have to do is just walk to our trailer and set it up. Yeah. And wait for them. It's really good. Great. Now, in your business, are you doing, um, is it just washers and grooms? Or are you doing nails as well? Is there other things you do as well? We, we, we cover everything. We everything everything? except for anal glands. <laughs> anal glands is not our... Uh, I know that service code, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very memorable service code. We've got 580 service codes in there. That's one that always first comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, we, we offer everything. We, um, we, we do really like to sort of have that big range of um, services. And just sort of make people aware that, you know, even though they might see the big sign saying Jim's dog wash, always don't hesitate to inquire about grooming because it's always worth asking. You never know. And having someone come to your house to groom your dog is definitely a lot better for, uh, especially people in our generation. I think we're used to that, you know. Uber Eats. Uber Eats. We, we like everything and we're happy to pay that little bit extra, yeah, yeah. but we don't have to move from our house. <laughs> so I was like, like I, did, I didn't know that it was something that you guys did. That's a fantastic yeah. to hear. Yeah, absolutely. But I was going to say as well, with the um, with with the grooming career that you're doing at the moment, is it something where you do ongoing training as well, or how does that sort of work in terms of skills? Because there's so many breeds and cuts that people probably ask for. So, how do you go about tackling those when a customer might ask for a cut which you haven't done before, or how do you go about that or upskilling? So yeah. usually, if we know they're coming up, we do a bit of research online. Um, we'll watch a YouTube video. Like I know surgeons I've seen online that will still Google stuff prior to the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? Not, it's not always sort of like you know, like you're an exam. You have to sort of you know memorize everything, and if you look through a book, it's over. So it's definitely not like that. Um, we are still professionals, but. We're just not that next level where we do the old Asian. We're not, we're not that. sort of the Asian fusion style just yet. We're more so about maintaining your dog and sort of, we do like beautiful little style cuts and everything like that. We do. Um, but even asking other franchisees that have been, yeah. you know, longer in the business, we have, you know, on ground support, we have, you know, franchisors. We just sort of, if we need a bit of advice and what they would suggest in terms of blades or scissoring for certain dog styles, um, there's even Facebook pages with groomers all around the world. And there's always that sort of someone to help, you know, there's always someone. And what are people typically, typically asking for? Is it more D sheds in spring, coming into spring or is it more just, it's, I, I guess it depends on the breed of the dog and what the customer want ultimately, but what are sort of the common sort of things you guys are doing? Yeah. Um, a lot of it's probably washers and D sheds. We've been getting a lot at the moment. People are wanting a lot of winter cuts as well. Little winter grooms, just sort of trim, oh, so I clean them up. Our biggest one that we have started is wash and tidies. So we offer a in-between service where we have, say someone's on a rotating schedule, we might have them for a wash one week um, and say two to four weeks later, we might have a wash and tidy up where we'll, you know, focus on their hygiene, their face, make sure they can see their tail, their their feet, you know, their paw pads. Uh, so they don't collect anything. Nails, all of that. Um, and just, we don't take length off the body. So that sort of keeps it a little bit longer for winter. Now we just um, we charge less for that because it's an in-between service. Too, and a lot of people go for it because um, they find that even a grass seed in the pad, if you take your dog to the vet, that could be I'll upwards of $200. Yeah, so. so we definitely do a very well-being and health check as well on the dogs. We definitely don't leave that out if anything concerns us. Yeah. Even little, the tiniest little bumps that might be a pimple. We just check. Just you always let the customer know. Yeah. That's a great point you mentioned. I've had, I've had this one before. So that little health check sort of thing, as you said, those spots and stuff, that's a really good thing. I don't think people actually know about, and they should know about, because that's a really another good benefit of getting you guys around uh, to, to help with the dog. Now, I was going to say as well, products that you use and recommend, what, what shampoos, um, are there any sort of products you use that you recommend that people have, or that you can tell them that you will use on their dogs? Yeah. So we, we, as a company, I think we're affiliated with Petway because we do get a quite a good discount. I've not had one issue with them. So we're just going to stick to something that works. Um, we use Petway pretty much for 90% of our products, would you say? Yeah. I'd say about 90% of the products. And if they don't have something, they you just source it somewhere else from a trusted Australian product for sure. Yeah. And especially with, um, colognes, we have a um, sort of range of different companies and whatnot, just trying out uh, different ones. So far, we have used the Petway ones, um, of course, but 
There is actually someone I highly suggest. She's an American uh, dog groomer at her own salon. Um, her name on YouTube is Girl with Dogs and she has her own branded colognes and everything and they have been big favourites. She's got the best advice for everyone and she's the type of person sort of like us who we take on the troubled dogs, the, the matted dogs, um, the aggressive dogs, give them that chance and she's She's got the sort of range of the the bubble gum, the sugar cookie, all the, the pairing, the pairing sort of thing, the blueberry facials, all of that. She's... Blueberry facials. Oh yeah, we, wow. we sell that. Just you do? Yeah. yeah, we do. You do vibration on the pads and paws and yeah. nose and all that. You need to film that sort of stuff on your phone or something and just send yeah, it to us. We can post that. I don't. It's going to go down quite. Um, people will be surprised to see a blueberry patient. It's yes. like we've become, TikTok. Yeah, we've become You should like do it. A... Take a video and send it to me. We'll post it on our stuff. So yeah, hey, Jade's bench on that too. She said, if you guys just keep posting on TikTok, you'll be famous. We'll become like an Indota spa. Yeah. Oh. Well, with your personality, you guys should, because you've got a great personality. I'll tell you what, if you get yourself in, and do that consistently, you could grow a pretty big account. I would be pretty confident to say. Thank you so much. But please send us that video though. I'd love to see it and share it with our stuff. No. <laughs> do you guys have an account set up or are you going to? We do. Um, yeah. um, so our TikTok is Jim's Dog Wash Prospect. Um, Prospect, yep. Yeah, and um, we've posted a little bit on there. We have got a bit of activity funny for our Facebook, just funny videos. and It takes a bit of time. It, yeah, yeah it, definitely. Social media is definitely the place to be for growing. But, Especially so, the editing and stuff. Editing, yeah. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, look, I'm lucky I've got a full time editor, but I think for you guys, you don't have to edit too much. I reckon just um just just set up the phone and just film like a ten seconds or something. Just doing the blueberry the facial would be just yeah. in, in isolation. There's, or you could even just film it and just talk over the job at the end to explain what you've yeah. done and why you do it. Really easily to do. Generally within the app, it's not too much. So um, but yeah, I'd love to see that sort of stuff. It'd be fantastic. And you guys should do it because with your personalities, I think you could go really really well and grow a massive account. But I was going to say with um your business as well. So you're only young in doing it. So what do you, it might sound like a really broad question, but what do you actually like about doing what you're doing at the moment? What to you is the standard thing? Is it the freedom? Is it, I haven't asked you about financial, you don't have to say anything, but is it the money sort of benefits or what is it to you? Yeah, absolutely. Both of them are the biggest two key aspects. Yeah. Uh, working for yourself and not having someone sort of micromanage you, all that type <laughs> of stuff. Um, Sort of being on the ball with, hey, this is my business. Like, am I going to obviously set up your trailer on the road correctly so you're just thinking ahead so no one hits you? You know, they can see phones and all that type of stuff. You're just always constantly thinking how you can protect yourself, pr protect the dog, and obviously your business name. Definitely. And sort of like that type of... Like what bring, gives you organisation yeah, and yeah. confidence. You become sort of, you know that if anything is not prepared, it's on you. And it sort of gives you that your own little manager, you know, you, you sort of want to, you want to look after your business. So, you know, if I don't, you know, if I don't text that customer back, then I won't have a, you know, a, yeah. a job with them. You know that it's on you. And if I don't dry the towels, I won't have, you know. If I don't do the washing, then, well, how are we going to work? <laughs> so constantly being on top of things, to-do list. Um, the financial part of it is really, really worth it. That's why we see ourselves sometimes living. Seven days a week. Um, it's definitely a big motivation. It's knowing that everything we invested, we didn't want to have to think about sort of owing money or loans. We, stuff. we really just started from scratch. We sold everything and we basically just outright bought it. And we've already gotten to that stage where we've, we've been in it for initial. nine months. We've already recouped all of our initial investment and profited a lot as well. So definitely has made us very confident and happy. With it. Well, has it extended to get, it might sound like a very obvious question now after hearing that, but is it, has it ex met your expectations of what you thought it was going to be? Has it exceeded it or has that been? It's exceeded it. It's exceeded it by far. It, um, we definitely knew that we would be comfortable knowing yeah. that we had that weekly guarantee. Oh, yeah. um, don't get us wrong. We weren't sort of thinking we're going to be left in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. We've always had support. We've always had someone to talk to. And I think having that sort of support from looking at people that have gotten to the points where we want to be at, we know that it's possible. So our goals are very, very big and they're only getting bigger at the moment. <laughs> we met a franchisee um, when we went out for lunch at Cafe de Villis. Yeah. Uh, he was going to go with Blue Wheelers. We sort of pushed him towards gyms. We didn't even know we had any benefit towards it. No, we didn't. Yeah. to tell him that we were happy and he, we could see with he was with his child and, you know, you can see 
it sort of pulls on the heartstrings a bit. You see that someone is looking for a career change and they don't look very happy and they just want to move on and be their own boss. And now we um, we sure, actually right really today. did convince him. Sure. And happy he was on the road with his trainer. And, he's and, very happy. And he's just been Good. great ever since. So. Obviously, got to put the hard work in. But other than that, there's not much else to it. That's it. Absolutely. And I was going to say as well, um, yeah, well, that, that's actually a good thing you mentioned as well. We do sometimes sell like, oh, you know, just rock up to gyms and all of a sudden you're going to make all this money. But you mentioned hard work there. That's it. So, so you obviously, from people listening to this, will know you guys work really, really hard and, and your customer service is obviously really, really high. And how do you keep such good energy? Is it just, you reckon it's due to your age or is it something where you just love being your own boss or is it, what do you guys do to keep up that such great energy and attitude? Look, we, some days it is very hard in terms of physically, we do feel like we're aging at a Expensive. Expensive, right? <laughs> yeah, won't um, lie about that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I won't lie. I, I must say, we do feel exhausted some days. Um, That's why we bought the actual second trailer. Yeah, car. we know that it's because a lot of the time and a lot of the um, reason that we are sort of exhausted is because we are doing those extra hours. Mm. Being both of us. Now that we're splitting up in our business, I can definitely see that the individual side. A lot of franchisees are on their own, so it does make it very worth it. For us, I think it is still very worth it being with another person. That is definitely not part of the question. It, it's We're still able to make that goal and reach above it. Um, but knowing that we can split, sort of calm down and, you know, be able to take our time, a little bit of extra time with things, um, I definitely think that keeps us sort of positive and knowing that we're building our future very, very rapidly to what, a lot of other people are, I think it sort of gives us what we that. used to like do. Well, to what we used to be. We we were sort of sitting on that average day to day, you know, you're basically working for the week to get through the next week. And I think now that we're at that comfortable position where we're able to say, well, I want to keep growing and growing and growing, you sort of just, I think you just stay motivated. You Yeah, you don't, you don't go stale when you have goals to look forward to. When things go quiet, there will be times where, you know, things might be a little bit quieter because of, you know, things might be a bit more expensive. There's been, you know, price rises everywhere, increases and everything, and the weather's been a little bit colder. Yeah. There will be times like that, but if you are discouraged by that, I highly don't suggest feeling that way. And I know that's, you know, yeah, I'm not going to tell you don't feel like that because um, I definitely felt like that. And then I realized, well... All of this time that I've been feeling like this, you know, I could have been growing my business in other ways. Maybe I could have had a less of an income week. Never below what we're guaranteed though. Um, so when we first started, it was 1500 wasn't it? Yeah, it used to be 1500 weekly guarantee. Now it's, I think, two and a half, right? Definitely. Yeah, they've increased the year. So there's definitely that sort there's of so safety there. Definitely there's safety been net. more franchisees that have come on board since that and they've still raised it. So yeah. there's just so much work. Definitely. Yeah. That's uh, great to hear. And I was going to say before ending today is about the support side of it. So from a support point of view in gyms, who who do you use and what sort of support do you ask or do you require or do you rely on? So I've allocated um, one franchisor yep. and that sort of covers you. They sort of check in with you every week and they yep. boost your posts on Facebook and all yep. that type of stuff. Jade has gone above and beyond for us. She will sometimes spend an hour and a half on the phone call listening to us, it. just talking to us, fixing problems, uh, giving us ideas of how to yep. overcome stuff. Yeah. Anything. She's she's like That's a great. she's sort of like she's like a, a mother to us. Yeah. Like she, you know, she's much older than us. She's much like older a, than us, but she's not like, like, like an older sister. She's like I'm an older sister. She's gonna hate me for saying she like yeah, I know she like that. She sits out there, so <laughs> no, she's got that, that yeah. in terms of warmth. She's got that warmth about her. She's definitely someone that we can you know, rely on to be to have our back always. She's the best is the best part of gyms for us. We are That's great to hear. I was yeah. going to say, what sort of advice would you recommend? Well, what would you sort of say to someone who might be thinking about gyms? Because you just, you've got such a good advantage on people. Like a lot of people might do what you were, were in your roles. They might have stayed there until they're 40 or 45 and then had enough, right? Whereas you guys have pulled yourself out really early and, and done it. So maybe what would you sort of say as a bit of advice or maybe things, words of encouragement to maybe someone who might be in that grind still where you were? Yeah. Well, it's, it's hard because people, obviously for myself, I said goodbye. I like just turned my back on an apprenticeship I just completed. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people will think, well, I've done that apprenticeship. I got paid minimal wage or I went and did that uni degree and I didn't get paid for X amount of years. Why should I give that up? 
it depends if if you're happy where you're at and life's working for that then continue like doing what you're doing but you, you will come across a crossroad where it becomes very rinse and repeat the same thing yeah and you will start to question can i do something else you may not feel accomplished um you may not you, you sort of want to achieve i think humans have that sort of need in them they want to feel that they've accomplished something or they want to feel appreciated they want to feel you know, like they're constantly growing, maybe still learning. You can never, you don't have to give up anything just because you're owning your own business. Yeah. You can have your hobbies. You can have, you know, you can go learn something. You can definitely do all of that. My my best advice and the one that I stick by because I've seen it with age with other franchisees um, is don't ever think, it, it's never too late. It's never too late to start. You're never at an age where, you just think, okay, well, I've left it too late. There's no point starting now. Yeah, I really do. Even if you are older and you, you know, you're sort of getting to nearing the end of um, your career, you know, why not do something on the side for fun for retirement? For you know, spend time with grandchildren and have that sort of hobby on the side where you can work your own hours, but still keep yourself busy. Because you do, I, I find a lot of people do get very bored being at home. Maybe they they just want to do something when they're retired and. I think this is definitely something that people could look at for sure. That's great. And thank you very much for your information and taking the time today. I have your busy schedule. Obviously, you've got a lot of work to do. Um, you can see why Jade recommended you guys are fantastic. Great attitude. And for someone, for people to do at such a young age as well as you have is a great credit to yourself. And you should really look back at that as a being a really positive thing. You're ahead of a lot of people. Trust me on that. Um, I'm going to give you this a call, Silver Voucher, after we get into this. Um, our team member in here will set it up and you'll get an email in five business days, hopefully. And there's basically two free nights a weekend away on us, um, just being star franchisees. And once again, thank you for your time and your energy and your enthusiasm. You do a great credit to the brand and we hopefully you're around for many years with the Jim Stock Watch Division. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Honor and Costa. Thanks for your time. So we appreciate it. Oh, thank you so Thanks, much. guys. No worries. Nice to yeah. You too. No worries. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.